What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered about the crop tool in Affinity Photo on the iPad? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen and today we're talking all about the all important crop tool in Affinity Photo on the iPad. This tool is fairly simple to understand, although there are some more advanced nuanced features that we will go into, but it is really important that you understand how to use this tool because cropping is one of the basic skills in digital photography. So let's go ahead, let's get started. Let's jump in on the iPad and start learning about how to use the crop tool in Affinity Photo. Okay, so now here we are in Affinity Photo and we're going to use the crop tool. Crop tool is the fourth tool down on the left hand side looks like a square with a line through it and so we're going to go ahead and just tap on that open up the crop tool the crop tool of course is one of the basic tools it's one that you really have to have in any photo editing program so it's really critical that it works but it doesn't need to be super complicated but there are some features that we want to go over the first thing that we want to talk about is just how you would crop you're just going to take any handle around the edge of the border and drag on it so I'm dragging from the bottom right here and I can format this however I want now, if we want to apply that crop, we would click the apply button, which is the little check mark. But if we didn't like the crop and we just wanted to get out back to our original, we would just hit the cancel button. The next thing that we want to look at is this mode down here on the toolbar. So right now it's set to unconstrained and that's the top mode. And that means I can set the width and the height to be whatever I want. And you can see I can do that either by dragging like I did before, or I can tap these numbers down here and put in specific dimensions. So if I want something specific, I can just type that in. If I want to change the mode though, I tap where it says unconstrained and I can see my list of modes. The next one is original ratio. So if I have it set to original ratio, I'm not going to be able to change the width and the height independently. I'm just going to be able to do it based on the original ratio that it was set to. One thing to note is that you can tap in the middle instead of on the edge and you can move it around. You can see it kind of snaps into place there. And there we have it back set to the original. So when I'm on the original ratio, I can make it smaller, but that aspect ratio will never change. All right, next there is custom ratio and a custom ratio when we tap on that, we then get these X and Y dimensions. So this is really useful if you're trying to make something for a specific format. So say you want to put this on Instagram. Well, popular on Instagram is square, so we might go one by one. So we just type that in there, and then we have a square, and we can position that square wherever we want. We can change the size of it, but it will always be square. Even if we drag from the sides, it's never going to stop being a square. So we can put that right where we might want it to be. So that's custom ratio. You could set that to anything. If we wanted 1920 by 1080, we can totally do that. So that makes that very easy. Next, we have the resample mode. So resample is the last mode and it will allow you to automatically resample as you crop. Now you wanna be really careful with this because when you're resampling, it's gonna be destructive. It's actually going to change the pixels that are in the picture. So you wanna be really careful with it. You can choose the units that you want. So depending on what you're doing it for, often when you're resampling, you might be preparing it for print. So you might wanna put it in points, pikas, or inches. You would only use feet and yards if you were dealing with something quite large. So if we want to put this in inches, then you'll also be able to set your DPI. So normally if you want it to be print, you'd want to set it to like a 300 DPI, that kind of thing. And then it will resample to that. Now it's important to remember that downsampling works well when you're making something smaller, but upsampling does not work very well when you're trying to make something bigger because it's asking the program to interpret other pixels that are not actually there. Okay, let's go back and we're going to switch this back to original ratio. And then we're going to check out the next menu. So we're going to tap the arrow on the right. And what we find here are our other options. And the first one is overlay. So when we tap this, you can see we are currently on the thirds overlay, which is super useful for photography because often you do want to use the rule of thirds. There are other options here as well, though. We have the none option where we just have no overlay to guide us and we can just put it wherever we want. I don't like that very much. I prefer thirds, but you can also do spiral, which will give you the golden spiral. So say I wanted to set the lighthouse right on the middle of the golden spiral. That might be a really useful way for me to kind of plot out where my picture was going to be. And lastly, we have the diagonals, which can be very helpful when you're trying to position it on those diagonal points. So those are your overlays. I'm going to set it back to thirds. And then we have the rotate option. And this is just going to rotate your crop by 90 degrees. It won't rotate the picture. Next, we have the straighten option. So when you click straighten, it's going to be a little confusing because it flashes blue and then nothing happens. But once you've clicked straighten, then you can go ahead and you can drag along a line in the photo in order to straighten out the picture. 
So just like that. Just hit Command Z to undo that because it was actually already pretty straight. Then we have these viewing options. The first one is darken. So if this is off, you can see that the pixels that we're cropping out are no longer dark, but it's set on by default. And that's normally where you want it to be so you can really kind of view the picture as you are framing it. This just makes it a little easier. The next one doesn't actually work in my experience and this is reveal. So when you click reveal, it is supposed to let you see cropped pixels. But let me just show you, that only happens after you've already cropped. So let me go ahead and apply this crop. Then I'll click on my crop tool again. And when I go to reveal, it should let me see with reveal on already cropped pixels because the crop is non-destructive. I should be able to get those other pixels back, but you can see I can't see that. If I drag out though, click apply, they actually do come back, they are there. It can be really hard since this reveal setting is not working to actually see what you're doing and you can easily get all of these other pix all of these transparent pixels showing up. So let me just hit Command Z to undo that and let me show you another way to get back to your original image, which is just to come up to your document menu, go to your canvas and do unclip canvas. And that'll take you back to your original image if you've cropped it. So I don't know why that reveal option is not working, but it appears to not be working. If anybody knows, please go ahead in the comments and comment why that won't be working or something that I need to do to make sure that it does work. But I think you should just be able to turn it on and off. So I think it's just a bug. Okay, and that is it. All you have then are apply and cancel, of course, which we've already gone over. Apply will accept it and cancel will not. And so now you know everything there is to do in the crop tool in Affinity Photo on the iPad. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed learning about how to use the crop tool and you understand how to use it better for your creative projects. Don't forget, I've got lots of courses on Affinity Photo and the other Affinity apps that are linked down in the description of this video. So go ahead and check those out on Skillshare, as well as the other tutorials in this series, which are all about all of the tools that we find in Affinity Photo. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.